So I've got to apologise, guys. It's been a couple of weeks since I got a video out, but you know, someone's got to take one for the team. Now that bulkhead here is actually a 20 millimeter H80 foam. It's 20 mils, it's only supposed to be 10 uh, in the actual plan. So I made them thicker thing and that'll be stronger, but it's, uh, it's actually coming back to bite me on the ass. So I've got to apologise guys, it's been a couple of weeks since I've got a video out, but you know, someone's got to take one for the team. I'm up here on the northwest coast of Western Australia in the X-Mount Gulf. I've just had a six day sea kayaking and uh, whale shark snorkeling adventure with a group that I brought over here. Honestly, someone has to do it and I'm really sorry it's me. It's, uh, it's been a very nice week, a couple of nights here at the four and a half star manta rays in Ingaloo resort uh, to get the sand out of my fingernails and the salt out of my ears and I'm about to fly home so hope you like this episode please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and make sure you click that bloody subscription uh, bell because if you don't get that the, uh, the notifications bell if you don't click on that mate you're not going to see what I've got planned for the following uh, following week and what I'm up to so um, I know it's a little bit off track but I've got to put it in because it's all in the context of this build and uh, I've just dropped over and seen and met uh, Sandy off Cruise Ningaloo. If you ever get over to Ningaloo Reef and you're not with me, there's no excuse for that, but if you ever do get over here, uh, give uh, Sandy a call at Cruise Ningaloo and do a trip out on his Leopard 38. It's absolutely beautiful. It's immaculate, this boat, and, and some of the best sailing you'll do anywhere. And of course, there's snorkeling and overnight stays available as well. Sorry if I'm moving you around, but I just can't get over the scene. It's uh, bone dry. We had a little bit of rain a couple of days ago, and what a cracker. What an absolute cracking destination this is. I've had so many trips over here. I know the place, it feels like home. So it's, uh, you know, come and join on one of my trips one day, guys. That's all you need to do. So I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. It appears I've got a bit of a problem. Um, the module up here, see this, uh, this bathroom here, that section right there, um, where that line is, is about five millimeters too far forward um, from when I've glassed this bulkhead in here. So this one here, I must have, when I've tabbed it in, I've probably put it five millimeters to the wrong uh, forward. And as a result, you can see that little scratch there on that crash bulkhead there. That's where the module won't quite slide in. Now, yeah, this is why it's important to have everything made and not just rely on, uh, on plans. So what I've got to do is I've just made this, um, this template off the front of that, which is basically that shape there. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this shape, which belongs on the back here, and I'm gonna cut away about, probably, oh, maybe about seven or eight mil, chisel it away, it's only a small piece, so I might even do it with a router. Um, probably best to do it with a router, but by doing that, it should give me the relief I need to get that module in place. And then ultimately that module is going to be glued. I'll put another layer of glass on this just to uh, consolidate the foam. And then it'll be glued to the bulkhead as well. Um, I don't want any squeaking when you sort of walk into the bathroom. So the module will actually be glued to this face, but it'll be that much cut out. So how I'm going to do that, I'll probably use a multi-tool first to get the, the glass cut. And then I might just run a router over it very lightly and just clean it out. Uh, probably the best way I think, but... Yeah, what a bugger, it's just one of those things, you know, you just forget um, certain things are just here to beat you. Now, the other thing that's happening too is these angles uh, here. I'm actually cutting these in with a, with a saw. I just cut a slot in here. The great thing about this, there's no underfloor tabbing to be done. It's going to all be glued in place. So you can see here, I've, uh, I've cut that into that one up there. They'll then be epoxied to the wall here, um, glued into the bulkhead for strength, and, and ultimately a uh, very, very strong way to, to reinforce a floor. So despite my best laid plans, um, I still had a problem because even though this was only supposed to be a 10 millimeter wide 
or thick bulkhead um, and I'd put in a 20 mil. Even when I went to put the module back in, as you'll see in a moment, it still wasn't quite a good fit. So I made an executive decision to ultimately make another bulkhead which would then be glued to that bulkhead and tabbed in place uh, even though I spent all this time cleaning it out. It didn't seem to matter what I did. So that I will do at a later date. I've uh, got other um, things to deal with at the same time. But as you can see here, me dropping this module in, although it did fit, it still was a tight fit and was very, very difficult to get it to the exact position. So I figured I'm just going to cut that out and then put another one in place. So here's the result. There's a lesson in this for everyone. If you think you gotta get it done in a hurry, forget it. This bastard, honestly, down here, <laughs> I have been going at it for about three hours. Um, it's almost perfect, but it is catching right here on this edge of this bulkhead. So I think the best method is to remove that and that and just let it sit down on top. And then, um, yeah, a bit disappointing because I thought I had it dead right, but you know, clearly a little bit out of whack and you lose a lot of that um, that sort of perfect fit and, and Jesus I'm glad I made those modules and didn't just career ahead and put bulkheads in because it would have been a friggin disaster. You're still not entirely happy here. <laughs> I've need about another, Jesus I reckon. It, it's actually down but it's not quite down so I need to just get rid of that little bit there and that little bit in the corner there and I reckon she'll nestle down pretty much spot on so that line there has to be level with this one because that's the floor height there is just no book to learn this shit i mean i read and read and read but learning how to do this sort of stuff i still gotta drop it a bit more i can't believe it i've had this thing out eight times um i've still got a tiny little pinch over here and another little pinch over here but i'm gonna make sure i'm just gonna get rid of it all together G'day everyone, 28th of March, I'm here on uh, Sydney Harbour, there's the big coat hanger in the background and uh, waiting for Ronnie to bring his Seawind 1160 into Yeend uh, Street Wharf here at Balmain. What, a, what an absolutely freaking cracking place this is, I mean look at the yachts, they're just everywhere, it's uh, absolutely amazing. We've got around about a 15 knot nor'easter blowing today and we're hoping for 15 to 20 so it's going to be pretty good. It's uh, it's going to be good fun, the Savo, so we're hoping for a bit of a better placing this week. We didn't do too well last week, but at least we finished. <laughs> the Pam Burridge. Funnily enough, Pam actually lives down the road from us and teaches surf, and in fact my daughter has done surfing lessons with us. She was an ex-world champion surfer. A lot of you remember her. It only, only takes a little bit of movement, Jan, doesn't it? Good, eh? You guys are all on episode 79 or something, I think. 
<laughs> I'm gonna binge watch me. That's made a massive difference, Dave. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, the shape's fantastic. Yep, yep. There you go, Dean just learned something, mate. <laughs> We're hungering along now. It's eight knots. Is that the wind? Yeah. So we're just going to get our tagging angle. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get the, when, we, when we've got the jib on next time, we'll do the we'll do the same thing. Yeah. Just upload it to Google Earth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh how good's that? That's fantastic. Where's the start line? It's that lighthouse, isn't it? Yeah, we're on it now, just about. Okay. Right, so it goes right. Well, we need to go about fairly soon. Yep, yep. To get Dean, the sailor. Two weeks, he's going to be in the woods Sundays. Sailing one of these on his own. And it's coming around, so it's getting that off. Watch this one coming straight at us, mate. That's our mate. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold, let's put the wind force around a bit. Go. Oh, textbook stuff, Dean. There's a right old battle going on here. He's coming over. And we've got Los Braces behind us here, Al. Now sabbatical. Everyone's this. Eight knots. Beautiful sails on this one, eh? Looking good, Ronnie. You're doing well, mate. You're catching. Woohoo! He's yeah, he's going out. That's good. He's going to take their wind, Ronnie. The Queen's Cliff's going to thread the needle here. <laughs> he's about to take some wind out of their sails for a second. Loving it. Oh, they sneak in behind him. Woo! <laughs> right on. Geez, he didn't take much breath out of him, did he? Ronnie's just got started on this guy. Look at this. Whoa! Right behind us. Well done, Ronnie. Bluffed him. Okay, so this one's gone. Let's get the next one, eh? <laughs> the tactics. It's crazy. Let's do the least tax we need to. Hold, 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 hold. Take it out of the jaws. Hold. Hold. Go! Go, Dino. Go, Dino. Alright, that's good. Hold on. We get, get that. Got a film crew. I love your sails, mate. Beautiful. They're gorgeous, are they? I've been called many things, but not Whisker Pole. That's my new nickname. That's what all the girls call me. And the guys, apparently. Whisker Pole. <laughs> That's pretty bad. 
<laughs> Let's go dislocate my shoulder if we get a gust of wind. <laughs> It's quite incredible what a difference a week makes. You know, a week ago we came dead last. This week we came third, and we had uh, Dave on board as a mate of Ron's as well, and one of his instructors that really helped with the strategy. And uh, having that iPad there, we were able to gain, um, you know, mere millimeters to, to get the edge on some of the competition. We were so proud of our efforts, but you know, thanks again to Ron and Dave. And you know, Ron's just such a champion, and, and what a scene, Sydney Harbour. I mean, it just does not get any better than that. Um, in the light airs, you know, we needed the whisker pole to uh, to give us that extra knot, and I'm going to take credit for that. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, let's get back to boat building, eh? While you enjoy the scene on Sydney Harbour. I've got a uh, hundred metres of composite angle, which you know, pretty much as I mentioned, is only going to do about half what I need it to do. Um, I had a number of ideas. I was going to use um, methacryl adhesive, which I've got. Um, you know, cartridges of, and they do actually do their glue in a cartridge form. Um, the one that they recommend is this two pack, so it's a two to one ratio. And the great thing about it, it has good gap filling properties as well, so, and it has good hold, vertical hold, so when you put it on, I just put these angles on, tab them in place, around about 20 minute gel time, uh, which is sensational for this sort of work, because it gets done quickly. Within a day, you've got a full cure. Oh. All right, so I'm down in the water tank. Um, to fit these angles that I've got, I have to cut little relief cuts in the bulkheads. I need to put another one back in here, but the best way to do that is just start it with a, um, with a multi-tool and just do a little relief cut here and then get a bloody hand saw, just a typical wood saw, and just cut a slot, get it to about 42 mil, slot it in, and it's done. It's a bit close quarters down in here, but a uh, simple relief cut in here will then allow that uh, that angle to fit in. And this is the water tank, so basically it's going to hold... I'm going to have an angle along here, boxing this water tank, and another one on the top here for the floor. Put a little simple cut like that, and then put the hand tool. Alright, so I've cut this little relief cut, and uh, you can see there it's actually fitting in. Cut in there. I'm going to then slot it out and drop it by about two or three millimeters so that this actually is level with the top of the tank. And uh, the problem with the floor level being there is I've only had this much room to allow for conduits and pipes and the like to come through here. So it's important that I sort of take my mask off. It's important that I get this down flush with the top of the water tank. And then there's going to be another top on here, so in there I've only got three inches to put on my elbows and senders and all these other things. So I have allowed for it, I'm hoping it's enough. I'm going to cut it right there. I'm going to need to relieve this about, probably around about two or three centimetres. Okay, so this here is then going to be cut off here, and that's it. That's the uh, lip on the top of my water tank, or just to hold the roof on anyway, hold the lid on. Right, so I've started cutting these angles, and um, as you can see, that uh, the lower one here is actually for the top of the water tank. Top one here is for the floor of the sole, so, um, and then I've got uh, flange across here as well, so they'll all be glued in place. I'm going to give it one final sand out before I glue these in. Now, I've chosen to use epoxy here because um, the fail tests have proven that this is one of the strongest mediums for gluing these angles on, 
And the great thing about this is the floor can then just be glued straight down. There's no more underfloor tabbing. There's nothing I need to do other than wipe this out. And, uh, and I'm finished. So this is all tabbed. Basically, this water tank's going to get a, a food-grade epoxy paint in it. There are probably four or five coats, I'd imagine, inside here to make sure that this is, uh, you know, pretty much impermeable and then also won't have any aftertaste. So there's plenty to uh, think about here. But I'm going to give this, this water tank a really good sand out, tidy it right up. And, uh, and in particularly on the top of the foam here, I'm going to um, glass over the top to make sure there's no foam, no water can get in to delaminate that foam, particularly on that baffle and in the limber hole here or in the baffle. So um, the rest of it's pretty much sealed. So, yep, that's a great result. This angle is a winner. Um, I've just got these sitting in place at the moment. As you can see, the bulk is there. Rather than having to get up and do an under vertical... Uh, tabbing under here all I need to do and uh, this is proven to be stronger than tabbing to be honest is uh, glue these guys in place and then I can just run a bead of epoxy over the top and glue the whole thing down so yeah pretty uh, pretty friggin happy with that idea because it's just gonna save me months months and months of tabbing Right, so time to glue them on. I've uh, prepped the surface, I've keyed it, I've sanded it, I've given it a bit of a wipe, and uh, now it's ready just to mix this stuff up. Okay. Good thing is, this stuff doesn't sag, so you can put plenty on without worrying about it um, dripping all over the place. I'd imagine it's just like a, some sort of colloidal silica or something in it. It's uh, definitely a, a pretty standard epoxy glue. I don't think there's anything special here. Yeah, that actually didn't go that well to plan. There's probably a little bit more curve in it than I would have liked. I probably should have cut a couple of little slots in it just to get the curving right. But um, I've clamped it in place for now. Once it's going in, you've got to keep going with it. Um, what I've also done is I've um, smoothed this out along here with this little rebate in here to make sure that it's uh, totally filled inside. I'm a bit concerned up under the neath here. Um, up under there that it's not quite filled out so there might be a little bit of gap filling required once I get rid of all these clamps but for now I mean it's in pretty happy to get those in I mean it's definitely you know there's 10 foot of tabbing there I would have had to do so upside down and inside a hatch so 
definitely an improvement. Um, I'm not convinced about my technique. I'm going to have to get some proper length um, pieces of MDF or something with a bit of curve in it like this has to get a bit of spring action to hold it in place. But I'm going to leave that for an hour or so and see if it's, uh, if it's going to hold. I think an hour should be more than enough. All right, so I've got both sides. And what I did is I just cut a ladder of um, MDF braces so I can wedge it out. So that's pretty right now. That's uh, in place. And I'll come back in the morning and, uh, and remove them and I'll get it done. G'day guys, next morning um, I've put down these angles, these composite angles, and basically I've just come in to see if they're set. Because uh, I don't trust glues all the time. I know the science is there, but you know, it is a bit, uh, it is often not always the science that uh, makes this stuff go off. It's, it can be temperature, it can be humidity. We had a really, really hot day yesterday and tonight, uh, sorry, last night, it was uh, pretty wet and humid. So I've come in. So uh, I'm going to pull these uh, little braces out. And, uh, and yet another uh, foreign body in my boat. Something that I haven't made. So I guess that's going to get more and more prevalent as we go forward. But these are rock solid. I mean, that is absolutely rock solid. That's never coming off. That is brilliant.